Hello and welcome back to Exploring Slime Rancher. My name is Rock Can, and this is the second half of a series exploring the geography and biology of the Far Far Range. So far, we've encountered many strange slimes here. Some that can explode, some that can teleport, and some that are bigger than my car. We've explored some of the wonderfully diverse biomes of the Far Far Range and seen some truly breathtaking sights. Since the last episode, I have received some star mail from some locals who've offered to help me continue my study of the Far Far Range. Let's begin, though, where we left off, on the edge of a teleporter to an unknown land. Stepping into the glowing light, we enter the Glass Desert. A scorching land of sand dunes, the glass desert is pierced by great glass pillars, caused by solar anomalies long ago. The desert is surrounded by a deadly sea of sand, while its dunes hide remnants of ancient technology. As the wind stirs across the arid hills, we'll catch a glimpse of a slime surviving through the barren land. The dervish slime is capable of creating whirlwinds, unleashing energy through a circular fin to lift itself, and anything else near it, across the desert. This technique for moving is very beneficial, as they often have to travel far to find the sparse fruit here. Their plorts are very valuable for creating clean energy. They store the spinning power of the slime, and are used to power turbines and generators. Continuing along the sandstone corridors, we encounter some strange flower bulbs which have managed to survive the harsh conditions. Walking a little farther, I discovered a ruined building with some more ancient technology. There are three plort statues here, which once powered on, reveals a fountain containing some glowing, mineral-rich ancient water. Using this water, I was able to get the bulb to grow, which bloomed rapidly into a lush oasis. A sanctuary from the harsh desert, the oasis was filled with plants and slimes, including a slime that was a plant. The tangle slime has a flower blooming on its head, which will sometimes release pollen throughout the air. While they may look pretty, they have an appetite for meat and can use their vines to grab chickens from far away. Because of their diet, their plorts are packed with nutrients, and are highly valued on Earth for farming and fertilizers. While trying to better understand these bulbs, I began to grow some more oases, but I was interrupted when the sky turned red and great pillars of fire began to erupt from the ground. While it provided quite the shock, I was lucky to find cover from the danger inside one of the oases as the aura it produced seemed to protect me from the fire, glints, and falling rocks. From what I could understand, these firestorms are caused by the great glass pillars, which act as magnifying glasses for the sun's light, creating hot spots under the sand, which eventually burst with fire. Right as the storm passed, I noticed some slimes made of fire. These hot-headed slimes need to live in heat, and unfortunately disappeared soon after the storm passed. They require a special habitat to ranch, and their plorts are used back on Earth to help power stoves and fireplaces. Once the storm had passed, I was able to return to the other oases, where I saw a slime shimmering on the sand. Covered in an array of glass tiles, the mosaic slime is quite dazzling. The slime is very similar to the glass pillars, also reflecting the sun's light and creating its own glints. Their plorts also share these reflective properties. Now, for some reason, pieces of glass that are taken off the far, far range turn brittle, but the mosaic plorts don't, which allows them to be studied on Earth to better understand the glass desert. Just like the other biomes, there are some gordo slimes which have formed here. Towards the end of the glass desert, we'll find some large ruins, including a great hall at the end, which appears to have once held another teleporter, though it looks like it's been broken for a long time. I sat on this step, 
writing my notes while admiring the landscape, but when another firestorm began, I thought it was best to get home. As I ran back to the ranch, I stumbled across two slimes I had yet to see before. The first is a golden slime, which ran away from me and proved very difficult to get footage of. This slime is incredibly rare to see, and even rarer to feed. While their plorts have no real use, they're incredibly valuable because of the prestige that comes with collecting one. The second slime I encountered appeared to be a white tabby at first glance, but it has a golden crest. Upon farther study, it seems to be a tabby slime with an extra fascination for nubuck coins, with the sound they make being caused by the coins jingling together. Upon being fed meat, the slime will explode with nubucks, though you'll have to be quick to feed it, as they'll run away upon seeing a person. Now that we've covered the main areas of the Far Far Range, let's discuss Largos. I'm sure you've seen them in the background of some of my footage, but in case you haven't, they look like this. And this. And this. You see, slimes like to eat other slimes' plorts, and when this happens, they become a Largo. These Largo slimes possess the characteristics of both slimes that they're made of, which can result in a teleporting rock slime, an exploding crystal slime, and many more combinations. Largos are valuable to ranchers because they give both types of plorts, increasing the profit per slime. Along with the physical traits, Largos also share the favorite foods of each slime, which can make it easier to feed slimes that usually only eat meat. There is risk to this reward though, if a Largo eats a third type of plort, it will become a tar. These slimes are aggressive, and will hunt down and eat whatever they can find, including you. They can wipe out a whole ranch in a few minutes, so it's best to be careful when playing with Largos. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I've been in contact with three locals who have invited me to explore their land to continue my exploration. The first is Mochi Miles, who owns a property in the biome known as the Nimble Valley. The Nimble Valley is made of a rock called Magneticore, and it's these stones that create the iconic floating islands of the land. Only one species of slime lives in the Nimble Valley, the Quicksilver Slime. These slimes feed on the natural static charges created by the Magneticore rocks, though it's possible to feed them pure electricity to speed up their plort production. Mochi will let anybody visit the valley, and will buy any plorts that you find. Our next invitation comes from Ogden Ortiz, a farmer who owns land in the wilds. The wilds is an isolated island, which still resembles a prehistoric time on the far, far range. Its tall mountains and unique landscape house a wide range of interesting plants, and lurking across these lands is an ancient slime. The saber slime is the final feline slime, and has been around since the Jurassic period of the Far Far Range. The ancient ancestors of tabby, lucky, and hunter slimes, sabers continue to thrive in the wilds. These slimes only appear in Largos, and have no preferred food of their own, taking on the favorite food of whatever they're combined with. They also appear to have an affinity for the Kokodobas, an ancient fruit which they roll into mud balls. The final person who got in touch with me was Victor Humphreys, a local slime scientist. While Victor doesn't own land per se, he has created the Slimulation a virtual rendering of the world, which is used in an attempt to predict slime behaviors and evolution. Unfortunately, the program is still quite glitchy at the moment. I volunteered to help Victor with his work, and spend a bit of time hunting for glitches, which I was able to return as bug reports to help improve the simulation. While it isn't the true far, far range, I did think it was important to showcase some of the research that's currently being conducted into the future of slime science. That's all of the notes I have from my journey so far, but I've just received word that a new island was discovered called Rainbow Island. 
I'm in talks with the 7Z Corporation right now, but I'll likely be sent to Rainbow Island soon to explore the new lands and document the slimes that live there. Be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss the next chapter of my explorations. Leave a like if you enjoyed, leave your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.